You're off to enjoy the beautiful Miami sunshine. Now, of course, you have beach days, pool days, and the glitz and glamour of Miami nightlife. But what else is there to do? Well, today we'll go through the five Miami musts that I recommend for you. sunny city and beyond its beaches, pool parties and vibrant nightlife, it also has a culturally rich aspect to it along with a few lesser known outdoor neighborhoods to enjoy. Today we'll take a little tour beyond Miami Beach to discover the five musts that I recommend for you to experience. Bienvenido a Miami! Now stay tuned as at the end of this video I'll share with you two of my favorite dining spots in the city. If you've been to Miami, please write up your favorite places to see and eat in the comments below. Okay, let's go. Hi everyone, so the first Miami must is Wynwood Walls. So Wynwood Walls is Miami's open air street museum and it opened in the year 2009. So here at Wynwood Walls, it's really an outdoor museum and you have over 50 murals done by 100 plus artists. You can get a guided tour or you can simply purchase an entry ticket for anywhere between five and twelve dollars. Also interesting that it is free for children under 12, though I wouldn't necessarily call all the artwork family friendly. So if you're into modern, cutting edge art, graffiti walls, this is the place to explore. I'll stop it right there and we'll let the art speak for itself. Some of the artwork is redone annually. They actually whitewash the wall and start all over again. So you can actually come and visit every single year and see something a little different. The second Miami must that I recommend is to visit Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, which is a stunningly preserved Italian Renaissance style villa nestled within elaborate gardens overlooking Biscayne Bay. Vizcaya was built between 1914 and 1922 as the winter residence of James Deering, a wealthy industrialist. The centerpiece of Vizcaya is the opulent main house designed to resemble a centuries old Italian villa. Visitors can explore its lavishly decorated rooms, featuring ornate ceilings, intricate woodwork, and exquisite furnishings. Vizcaya houses an impressive collection of European art and furnishings dating from the 15th to 19th centuries. Highlights include the Grand Entrance Hall, the stunning Italian Renaissance-style courtyard, the ornate library, and the opulent dining room. Exploring the villa provides you with a glimpse into the luxurious lifestyle of the early 20th century elite. The expansive gardens surrounding Vizcaya are as much a highlight as the villa itself, so remember to check the weather before visiting. Designed to evoke the grandeur of European estates, the gardens feature meticulously manicured lawns, sculpted hedges, ornamental fountains, and tranquil ponds. Highlights include the formal gardens with their symmetrical layouts, the secret garden hidden behind walls covered in vines, and the stunning waterfront vistas overlooking Biscayne Bay. From the lush greenery of the gardens to the architectural marvels of the main house, every corner of Vizcaya provides a stunning backdrop for photography enthusiasts. You can even rent some of the spaces on the estate for special events such as weddings. I strongly recommend purchasing tickets online in advance at Vizcaya.org as it is a very popular site year-round. In terms of time, you'll need a solid three hours to properly explore the main house and the gardens. 
Whether marveling at the architecture of the main house or strolling through the gardens, Vizcaya promises an unforgettable experience for all who visit. So for our next Miami must, we are visiting a little Havana, the Cuban neighborhood of Miami. Plenty of things to see on Calle Ocho, which is the 8th street. I apologize for the noise. There's always some sort of road work or construction going on in Miami. But for our first stop in Calle Ocho, we are stopping at the famous Versailles Cuban restaurant, where I will have my favorite Cuban sandwich. Now there are many Cuban restaurants in Miami, so please put down in the comments below what is your favorite Cuban restaurant in Miami so that I might visit it next time as well. Hopefully there's not too long of a wait, it's about 11.30 a.m. So let's head inside and have our lunch. The restaurant you can actually then access the little coffee shop which actually has also an outside window uh, if you want to come and grab a delicious cortadito with some Cuban pastries they also have the bakery just next door and I'll show you some images of that as well Ocho in Little Havana. Now important to know if you're visiting the Miami area or Southern Florida in general during the winter time that you have beach days and then you might have as today a jacket day and you can go sightseeing more comfortably without being in strong heat. So right now we are here on Calle Ocho. This is the main section of Little Havana and we're gonna be visiting a few places here, uh, including a cigar shop and a domino park as well. So this section is approximately an 11 minute drive from the Versailles restaurant to here, but this area is where the majority of the Little Havana businesses are. Okay, 
Okay, for our next Miami must, we are here in South Point Park. Now this is actually my favorite spot in Miami because you can just come here to take a walk either in the afternoon or in the evening. If you sit at one of the bars along the way, you can see cruise ships leaving or coming into port, especially if you're here on the weekends. That usually happens Saturdays or Sundays uh, between, I would say, 3 and 7 p.m. So that's a great spot for that. So we're gonna keep walking a little bit along South Point Park. And this is at the very, very end of Miami. So it's First Street and that's where you park. Uh, if you're looking for an address to put into your GPS, you can just put in the Smith and Walensky restaurant and it will bring you to the parking lot that's directly behind the restaurant. And that is actually a public parking lot where you can park for pretty cheap. It's about $2 per hour. So that's really great. So we'll just keep walking along the way and show you a little bit more about the South Point Park walkway. Okay, so at the very end of South Point Park, you have the South Point Park Pier, which is a great way to end your walk or to spend an evening. It's right by the ocean. It's right by where all the cruise ships leave. It is a great spot. Just before we get to our final Miami must and two of my favorite restaurants, if you're finding this video interesting, please click on the like button. It really helps out the channel. Okay, our fifth and final Miami must is that you should go on a cruise. You actually have two cruise ports in the area, the Port of Miami, as well as Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale. So lots of cruise options around here. When we drove by the port, we were lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the newest, biggest ship in the world, Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas. Pretty impressive. So that completes our five Miami musts. So next time you're in the Miami area, once you've had your sunny beach days and your amazing nightlife, please check out one of the five places that we discussed during this video. I think you'll have a great time learning and discovering more about the amazing cultural aspects of Miami. As promised, what are some of our favorite Miami dining spots? First favorite, Smith & Walensky. So one of the things I do recommend for you to do is to have a happy hour drink here at Smith & Walensky or perhaps an after dinner drink. And if you're here during mealtime, Smith & Walensky is one of my favorite restaurants here in Miami Beach. It's absolutely delicious. It's a steakhouse, but they have fish and seafood as well. And it's in a great location. You can sit by the water right here in South Point Park. So Smith & Walensky is definitely a dining option that I recommend. Another great spot for dinner and some nightlife is Miami in the Wynwood neighborhood serving delicious Mexican fusion options with fire dancers as bonus entertainment. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, please share it to your socials so that your friends and family can see it as well. And to make sure you never miss out on new videos, please subscribe to the channel right now. Now, if you want to learn a little more about my latest cruising experience, please check out one of these recent videos by clicking up here. This way, you make sure you're always ready to go.